These videos are a stream recording hybrid. Random commentary based on the stream chat may be found. Stupid gifs found from the stream chat will also be found. Viewer discretion may be advised. And smoke. Just smoke outside their house while they're waiting for me at the hospital. Because that's the nice thing to do. Zach, picking up from where we left off. Okay, Zach, I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next. And finally, I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie, but I've put a lot of thought into this, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. 1975, directed by Steven Spielberg himself, the grandfather of panic movies, set in a small town in Massachusetts. That movie made me stay away from the beach for years. I was always afraid that a hand might come floating up. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah? It's Jaws. The underwater camera work accompanied by that John Williams music. I'd never been that scared by a movie before. But the best thing about it is that it isn't just another panic movie. The mayor who won't close the beach even when there are so many victims. Chief Brody putting the citizens' lives above all else. The film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. It certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. That's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. I guess I was still just a child back then. But still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. That reminds me, Zach. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg. The second Back to the Future. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. So, the scene where Jaws appears is right after Marty McFly goes 30 years into the future. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic shark. Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, he sees the words, Jaws, Jaws part 18, part I called 19. it. I called it. The director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies. It was still a great joke. 30 years from 1985 would be 2015. We'll be there pretty soon. I wonder what life would be like by then, Zach. Uh, as a person who lives in 2015, I would know. So guys, welcome back to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. So, in the last episode, uh, we did side, pl side quests Zach, and stuff. Zach, is there and... something here that you want to check out? Yes. They told us to be there before 2100, but don't worry about that. Thank Let's do whatever you want Thank to you do. for interrupting me, York. Uh... We, uh, we went in and I apparently am really good at darts. That's literally it. I got really lucky in the last shot and it turned out I got a 10 times multiplier. And as such, got 500 points that got me the win. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, is this the house? Let's see. This is George's house, yes. So guys, we're what we're doing is uh we're smoking. It's now twenty still closed. Even 23 minutes past when he should have been leaving and coming back home. Hi there, there. They just left. So I should probably wait a little bit longer. Well, this is interesting. I'm glad to see that it actually does live updates on that kind of thing. Why did it kick me straight out of it? What just happened? Uh, let's try that again. Maybe I double click the button? I must have. Haha, -ha, George.
George, Hi. which do you prefer, mustard or hot sauce? You didn't come all the way to my house just to ask me that. You don't have other things you should be doing? Of course I do. But I'm interested in you right now. Interested? Agent Morgan, look, my mother is sick. If it's not urgent, I'd rather we did this later. Is she very ill? Did I just change clothes? Well, I have to say, it doesn't look good. I'm sorry to hear that. Anything I can do? No. This is a private matter. Can't ask for your help. You know, back in D.C., people always came to me for personal advice. I'm here to help you if you let me. There's no need for that, Agent Morgan. Please. You need to... Abide by the rules, right? Okay, I get it. I didn't mean to invade into your private matters. Oh. George, I just thought you could use a friend who wasn't a dumbbell. Back when I was a kid, my mother really liked this flower. Flower? Oh. Yes. Small flower. No name. It grows somewhere here in Greenvale. Although I must admit, I've never seen it actually growing anywhere. I think it would make my mother happy if you could get her that flower. George, that's good. Great idea. Every woman likes to receive flowers. You know all about that, right, Zach? In any case, this is a personal matter. Make sure it doesn't interfere with the investigation. Of course not, George. But I'm going to find that flower for you. Well, I found the nameless flower already, thanks to Mr. Ryan saying that it was growing back there. And I could just go get it now again, because, you know, it's raining. Hello, George. I have something for you. You want to see my bronze card or my weapon bag? No? Flower with no name? Alright. George, here it is. The Nameless Flower. Agent Morgan. I agree, no though. It does that, look me. like a daisy. I did this on my own, during my private hours. Tell your mother I hope she gets well soon. Yeah, I'll do that. This will make her feel at least a little better. I sure hope so. I really do. Got a radio. For some reason. Take this. It's an emergency police radio. If you're ever in trouble, use it. And I'll be right there. Thank you, George. Ha! Huh. Thanks, George. Now, Agent Morgan, don't take this the wrong way. It's not an emotional thank you gift for helping me with my mother. I'm giving you this so we can do our jobs more smoothly, that's all. So I can now fast travel. Thank you, Ran. Mr. Ryan. Okay, that's freaking awesome. Time to go to Emily's house. Emily, you were the final side quest we need to deal with. And after we finish your side quest, we are actually going to be giving you a little bit of a wardrobe change. I can only do the side quest when it's raining? Really? And that's my luck. down this way? Let's check. Okay, I'm going down the wrong way. I need to turn around. So, I'll go to the end here and make the left turn. Okay. Apparently a mirror, instead of breaking off, just decided, nah, you're stopping. Okay, that's not how drifting works. I'm confused where I am. I've already gotten that confused just by that weird turn.
Okay, so apparently it's naturally fast, but even faster in the rain. Okay. There we go. Perfect. I parked perfectly, guys, don't you see? I'm right here, parked, exactly like I was before that little cutscene played. And it's closed. Um, time to check her mail. Got bullets. I don't see her. Yeah, I think she might have gone to sleep. Look in here real quick to be sure. Nope. Emily. Nice dress. Okay. Well, my one chance. Smoke for like 10 minutes. Nope. Oh well. So, I think I'm gonna use the radio. This is an infinite use one, right? All right. My sweet home. So now that I have fast travel, <laughs> I can do just about anything. This isn't the place I was sleeping before. So you're saying I should stay out past midnight then? Okay, so I need to waste seven minutes of my time. Hit me! I'm Batman! I'm about out of things to do, so... Tomorrow I'm definitely going to go do the main quest stuff. And it would seem that everything is finally... In events. Come on, there's still three minutes left. I wanna I wanna do this. Two minutes left. Alfred's general store. It always feels like Oh Uh this doesn't look fun. Ryan, what did you do? Ryan, is that a giant dog?
Bullseye. Nope. Nope. Why did Ryan tell me to do this? I found a way to beat it. Great. Bullseye. Amazing. Don't Bullseye. worry guys, I got this. This Great. toy isn't yes. cheap. Great. Bullseye. Got it. So now I'm in hell. But I did kill it. I'm gonna heal myself real quick. Actually, I don't need to. I need some food, which means I need to go home. Okay, now I can go home and rest now that I've seen hell itself after midnight. Wait, that's not my home. Uh, this is my home over here. This happens every night? Why? Okay, I'm gonna get in my suitcase and finally change into my other clothes. This is what we chose to wear at the beginning of the game and I never put it on because I forgot. Money rewards times three. I am now couch man. Do I have anything to eat? Not really. Whatever. Apparently, I have to send my old clothes in for cleaning. <sighs> Time to sleep. Alright, should I get a deep or long sleep? Will anywhere be open tomorrow to eat at? And also, why am I not sleeping at the hotel? I thought, where'd I even get a house? <sighs> well, my hunger is extremely down. Uh. Oh no. I am going to die. Uh, aha. Perfect. Take item out. Can of pickles. Lollipops. Time to eat. Can of pickles. And lollipops right there. I'm fine now. See, everything's okay, guys. I wasn't dying of hunger. Where am I? How do I get out? Ah, oh, yeah, that's the front door. Alright. Uh. Time to teleport. Where was I going? Uh... 
No, no word further down the list. So I think I'm gonna go to the hotel because I wanna I wanna end this on a high note. I wanna eat. I wanna get ready. Oh, you're saying the milk farm? Is the hotel not open yet? Hotel is open. I'm gonna go there. Because I want to drink some coffee. Oh, what's this? Sunny in the morning, but cloud at noon. That should turn rain by evening. So fun to do. Anything in there now? Nope. Good thing so. All right. I could get some uh, vending machine food. Ah, Polly, just who I was looking for. Oh, hi. Okay. Sure, why not? Everyone likes coffee, right? Lucky well, item is a lighter. I do not There's have There's always trouble heading my way in this job. But I'm always up for a little excitement, too. Sure, why not? I'm gonna do it again. This should be fun. There's no theme park in this town, though. All that good luck is just slipping away. But I think I'll have a thrilling enough time right here anyway. Info gathering bonus extra for fortune telling. Um... Hey there, Paul. Oh. Hi. Bonus for gathering info. How do you get food here? Ah, I love this fortune telling though. It's fun. Do not act without thinking first. Lucky number is three. So, my lucky number is three today. The first case I worked after joining the FBI had three victims. Sure, why not? Same again. Unpredictable, unpredictability lies ahead today. Lucky place train. An unpredictable life is a wonderful thing. Cases may come flooding in like passengers at rush hour. I'm just gonna let this go. Seriously though, he drinks way too much coffee. It's probably not good for him. Do I just... Can I not eat from here? I mean, it's a lot of food. Why would we want... 
This makes no sense. Why would we want this? $35? Excuse me. No, I'm not paying for this crap. I got my fortune. I'm leaving. Bye. I was paid to have that fortune. I'm not spending that entire fortune money on crap food that's overpriced. To the milk barn, where I get discounts. Seriously though, who would pay $35 for freaking four crackers? Who would pay $35 for crackers? Unless you're buying a huge bulk of them, it's not... It's not a good spend of your money. Hi there. Alright, let's buy. See, it's 17 here. That's still overpriced, but, you know. Destroy these crackers. This makes no sense at all. Alright, then I'm leaving here. How will I need to? I can't do any more quests here. The only place I can go is, uh, well, <laughs> one place that we can go. Where's the nearest phone, I wonder? Should probably find that. There we go. Saving the day. Cost one dollar save, and I got forty-eight dollars for doing it. Now, guys, I need to go back to the main menu to fix some things. To get a vote from the stream audience, I'll be right back. Yeah, we're going to uh, the plot. By the way, you guys will see in a couple minutes what we were voting on, but some of you have probably already guessed. Not gonna spoil it though, because you know, fun times. Just my imagination. Huh. Alright. Just another 33 and a half hundred meters. So apparently there's drag racing I can do. I could always uh, go after a bunch of the cards that are hidden around town, though I'm sure some of them will have to get later from other things, so I might as well wait. I just hit an invisible wall. Fold this up here. I can go across the there, that'll work. Apparently I can't drive through this open field because that would be ridiculous. I can drive through other places, but not this one because of visible walls. Haha! -ha. Quick turnaround. And I'm more of an iced coffee drinker than a uh, hot coffee drinker. And as such, you know, it's kind of uh, not really good for cold weather. I only drink it when it has a lot of sweets in it, though, because, you know, sweet haul is over here.
here we are at the Greenvale General Hospital. After being 24 hours late for it, because I was too busy side questing. Agent Morgan, have you no respect for rules and protocol? We were waiting for you, and now you try to go in by yourself. Oh, George. I didn't see you in the parking lot, so I thought I'd wait inside. Just watch it from now on. Mm-hmm. I don't like inconsiderate people who think that they're above the rules. And I'm sure I've made this point clear by now. Calm down, George. He probably just got lost on his way here and rushed in. Right, Agent York? Let's go inside, then. All right. Well, as you can tell, she's wearing a cat outfit because there are four outfits for her that I have, and I'll be cycling through them throughout the game. Hello, Sheriff. Freckly Fiona, hospital receptionist. Yeah. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But how did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Ooh. Besides, that okay. scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain. It's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. And now we're in here. Hey, Emily, how are you doing? Nice outfit. I saw you wearing a blue dress last night. I wasn't creeping in your window. What are you talking about? All right. What to do? I could save it a phone and talk to Fiona. Why not? I've never spoken to Fiona before, so... And she has nothing to say. Uh... Sunny in the morning, but cloud at noon that she turned to rain by the evening. Which is good, because I need to do a side quest tonight. The final side quest I can do this episode. Whoa. Okay. To explain, uh, the game is cut into episodes, which is cut into chapters. It's kind of like the chapters and sections of a book, I guess. Let's barge through everything they have. And barge into here. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer. And a card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zack, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? King passes Rook and then meets Bishop. Okay. King, Rook, uh, Bishop, Pawn, Queen, Knight. Knight takes a pawn to the Queen. Okay. King... Passes Rook, and then meets a Bishop. Queen 
No, no. Knight takes a pawn to the queen. Okay. Like that. KRB can PQ. That's really simple. The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. Yeah. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Nah. The card key for the underground four. Damn, were you impressed by that? How about you, George? We need to see Anna's autopsy. You're saying Usha's in the basement, right? Okay. Well, let's run out here and get to the elevator. Assuming it's an elevator, not a staircase. Might be wrong, it might be a staircase. I would assume an elevator would have a. I mean, a hospital would have an elevator, though. I might be wrong. Okay, let's check the map here. That's a lot. That's a staircase which will lead there. Okay, perfect. See, I can use map, guys. I can already has maps. Okay. No password? Dang. So... Shows for storing bodies. I wish you don't open these unless we really need to. Okay, for some reason those are two ones that you have to open at some point. What's this? Don't know why I couldn't go in the other door, but whatever. Asha. Sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? Usha Johnson, the doctor. All right. This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usha Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Wow, George is not really a... Whatever. Next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, 
The time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Okay. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Happened while she was alive. Which means? She was cut up while she was still alive. That's morbid. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound, nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. Possibly the most drunk? tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Anna's tongue. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness, and then the killer killed her. Well. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that, or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. Now, he watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usher, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. Okay. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed. Right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. Okay. Well, personal interest or no... Mark in the right hand, feet. She's neatly wearing fake fingernails. Anna's body's lying on the table. Judging from the impression, she was holding something in her right hand, but she removed to around six hours after death. The object was circular with a ruby shaped like a piece mark. Traces of evaporated liquid around the eyes. She must have cried before she was murdered. Tongue was removed. Look at the edge of the stump. Yep. From yes. her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. 
Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining. But you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator. Oh no. Bit off honest tongue. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. Yep. I thought those are the bag that was the baggie he had in his car. There you go. Amazing, huh? I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes queen. His rook takes your queen. Then your knight takes rook. And checkmate. Huh? Oh. Yep. My first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. <sighs> okay, well, York is a genius. That's what we've learned today. <laughs> They're here. All right. Uh. Hmm. I'm not sure how to feel about this. I have no idea how long this one's been going on. So, guys, next time, let's play Deadly Premonition. Uh. I think Silent Hill Syndrome's happening because we're kind of going into the dark world again, and things are not good here. So guys, as this nightmarish hell envelops, I'll see you guys next time.
Alright, guys, I'm actually going to be done for tonight. It's almost midnight now, and I'm getting a wee bit tired. And I need to actually go take care of the dogs and grab something to drink and probably something to snack on. So, guys, with this, I'm going to bid you all adieu. I did, I did really like that part. I thought it was really interesting and showed off quite a bit about York's character. Hmm. It will get much better. Alright. Um, so I'm going to assume we're not very far into this game at all and that we have a lot to do. And that makes me very, very happy. So guys, I'm going to end things here. See you guys a bit later.